came back. Good to see you. We're going to talk about ravenous listening. What that means is this. I want you to listen aggressively to everything you hear, especially during conversations. Listen to how people form their sentences and what they're, being, what they're saying. Listen to me in particular. Listen to the nouns, adjectives, adverbs, everything we've talked about so far. The whole idea is if you improve your listening, you'll improve your reading. In the GED, they want to let you read very closely. If you saw the, my presentation about dangling modifiers and misplaced modifiers, you know that they can be very tricky and it sounds right, but actually it's written wrong. So you have to listen very aggressively, or in my case, what I'm trying to say is very ravenously. Like you're really hungry to listen, hear what they're saying. Okay, so read like you're extremely hungry for information. Read like you are ravenous for beautiful sounding sentences. If the sentence sounds funky, it probably is. But your job in the GED is to find out what's wrong with the sentence. Wrong verb, wrong noun, no verb, no noun, sentence fragments, run-on sentence, dangling modifiers, all those things can come into play. You need to listen to the sentences very carefully, and if they don't sound right, if they ring wrong to you, then you've got to be able to fix them. Let's talk about a little bit of reading comprehension. This is very close. I'm going to do a lot of things. They aren't that important, but I want you to just get an idea. First thing you need to do is make sure when you're listening to people or reading is sound discrimination. Recognize stress patterns. How do people stress what's going on in the word? Now, when you're listening, when you're reading, the stress will come from where the commas are placed, where the exclamation points are, all that stuff. So you have to read with a certain flow like the person is actually talking to you. And it'll help you do the grammar part of the test. The pauses are indicated by commas and semicolons. Stress patterns are by the other kind of punctuation like exclamation points. Word recognition. Recognize the sound pattern as a word. Locate the word where it belongs. Retrieve the word information about the word. So what happens in the GED? They'll tell you a word you may not know. But later in the sentence, or later in the paragraph, they'll tell you what that word means. You have to know whether that word is a verb, a noun, an adjective. Not very grammatical, but you have to know what role it plays within the sentence and how it's being modified. Sentence processing. The fancy word for that is parsing. Tearing a sentence apart. What part is the subject? What part's the verb? What part's the modifier? And how does it all come together? Those kind of things, knowing that instinctively, by listening to it in your daily practice and when you're reading, will help you earn the GED. Construct the literal meaning of the sentence. Right? What's the sentence really mean? Are there ambiguous words? Words that have more than one meaning. You've got to figure out what that meaning is so you really get a feel for it. And that way you'll know how to do the correct grammar corrections. And it'll also help you in your own writing. Hold on to that information and make sure you understand what's going on. Recognize the cohesive devices. Cohesive devices means words like similarly, in addition to, words that help you transition from one idea to the next. Infer the implied meaning or intention. Uh, um, intention. What's the author saying on the, on the surface, but what's he mean on a deeper level? That will help you in grammar, and it will help you comprehend what's going on with the sentences and the paragraphs as you go along. Now, this is getting deep. We're going to talk about mindfulness. The first component of mindfulness involves self-regulation and attention. So it is maintained in an immediate experience, thereby allowing for increased recognition of mental events in the present moment. What does that mean? This is what it means. As you're doing the GED, 
or as you're studying for the GED, or as you're playing basketball, or doing anything for that matter, you need to stay in the present moment and not trip off into the future and not start worrying about the past. The GED is a seven hour test and you're going to have to maintain your focus throughout the GED. But it's especially important on the grammar part of the test because they're trying to trick you all the time and they're trying to throw distractions at you all the time and if you just kind of mull over things very quickly you aren't going to get the correct answer. So you're going to have to be mindful of where your mind is at all times. The second component is adopting a particular orientation towards your experience. That means being curious, being open, hanging in there. I know this sounds like a lot of godly good, but it takes, I know it does. Look, what it wants you to do is really be engaged in what you're doing and not trip off someplace else and let your mind wander someplace it doesn't need to go. You really need to stay focused on what you're doing for the test because it's a long test and it's tricky. And if you're taking the test in 2004, it's going to be a lot harder than it is in 2000, 2014, not 2013, because it's going to be a lot harder test. I'm not going to read all this. What I'm going to tell you what it is, is attention and mind stream. Your mind is flowing all the time. So what you want to do is watch what's going on in your mind and keep focus on what's going on in your mind and make sure it's in the right direction. Keep Make sure it's oriented in the right place and going in the right direction. Last concept, beginner's mind. Beginner's mind means don't be so concerned with being critical but being open and like you're new, learning something new at all times and at all moments. Have a beginner's mind. Look at things like a baby would look at things, where all of a sudden everything is new, everything is interesting. I'm not saying you to put things in your mouth like a baby would, but what, you're, what a baby's really trying to do is really taste and experience the world because it sees everything for the first time. You have to be the same way and keep beginner's mind as you're going through the GED and as you're studying for the GED and while you're reading books. The whole idea is to slow down and really focus on what you're reading and what you're listening to. By doing that, you'll be able to find the mistakes and things and be able to correct them because that's what the GED wants you to do. That's about it. I know I didn't have a lot of fun stuff and a lot of fun quizzes in this, but you need to get this information. I know. But the idea is to be open, to be a beginner, to focus your mind, and really practice that on a daily basis before you take the GED. So when you take that long seven-hour test, You'll be, you'll be present the whole time, you'll maintain your interest the whole time, and you'll be able to pass the test with flying colors because you're really into it. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.